putting our reputation at stake. And things are beginning to sizzle. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark facts about fast food places. Two weeks, French fries from a regular restaurant. Two weeks, French fries from a McDonald's restaurant. Pretty sure you, you know what you're paying for when you come to Taco Bell. If you want real beef, you probably go somewhere else. For this list, we're looking at unsavory stories and behind the scenes details about your favorite fast food chains. We'll be focusing on lesser known facts that relate to food preparation and public perception. Warning, this gets gross. Which fast food franchise do you trust most? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Pink Slime. It's said to be the entire chicken, eyes, guts, bones, ground up into something called mechanically separated poultry. Not us, says McDonald's, photo hoax, but pink goo won't go away. Also known as pink goo, lean, finely textured beef, or LFTB, is a meat byproduct that's gotten a lot of unfavorable publicity. Then again, when the FDA approves a product for, quote, limited human consumption, it doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Pink slime is a paste made by removing low-grade leftover beef trimmings and removing the fat. It's economic fraud. It's not, it's not uh, fresh ground beef. It's a substitute. It's a cheap substitute being added in. Because pink slime is more at risk for E. coli and salmonella, it's commonly treated with ammonia, leading to bans in Canada and the European Union. Tasty, right? This is a practice that is openly sort of admitted to being in at least 70% of ground beef products. Despite the uproar that kicked off around 2011, pink slime is still widely used as filler, including at many fast food joints. In fact, in 2018, it was reclassified in the US as simply ground beef. Number nine, fast food restaurant logos trick you into feeling hungry. The Travis Scott meal, just $6. Say Cactus Jack sent you. Fast food is usually pretty inexpensive by definition, but those meals add up to massive profits. Right now at Burger King, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.99. No, wait, is that really right? Yeah, it says it right there. $1.99, 10 nuggets, limited time only. When a business operates on the scale of McDonald's or Burger King, a comparably massive budget is allocated to marketing, including consumer psychology. Now, take a look at all these logos. Notice anything? they all employ similar color schemes, with red being the most dominant color. Studies have shown that red is stimulating. As to whether this translates to hunger, that remains up for debate. Color is just one of many tactics that companies use to connect with their customers. And if swearing off fast food wasn't already hard enough, those colorful red logos might make it even harder to ignore. Regardless, major fast food chains seem to have bought into the idea. Diving deeper, red seems most effective when paired with yellow, which is said to promote feelings of comfort and happiness. The principle is referred to as the ketchup and mustard theory. Number eight, poop soda, anyone? Consumers have a morbid curiosity when it comes to gross flavors. Just look at the success of Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans made by Jelly Belly. Or how about when Nathan Fielder used poop-flavored frozen yogurt to promote a local business? It was a success, and like I predicted, the store was full. And in the world of business, that's all that matters. Sadly, the poop soda that we're referring to is not an intentional marketing ploy. It's contamination. That's right, soda fountains are serving up more than a combination of fizzy water and sugary-flavored syrup. A 2010 study conducted in Virginia found fecal matter in nearly half of all samples taken. Well, one way you can get in is if you're filling up the soda and you actually inadvertently touch. So this is somebody, an employee, went to the bathroom, didn't wash their hands. Well, exactly. I don't want to touched. think about where people's hands have been before right. they serve the soda. And before you blame the customers, this was true of both self-serve fountains and the ones behind the counter. Based on similar studies, this isn't an isolated incident. Number seven, well-lubed salad. Yeah, one little bottle of spermicidal lube. Evan, that's psycho shit, man. It's not. It's like Charles Manson shit. Lubricant has many worthy applications, like keeping our cars running. But while oil is a type of lubricant, and olive or vegetable oil are common ingredients in salad dressing, we still don't want lube in our salad. So if you only have a second, hurry to Wendy's for a salad. They're fresh, fast, and ready to go. Have a nice day. When you make the healthy choice at a fast food joint, those leafy greens may be topped with propylene glycol. Don't remember seeing that product on the shelves of your local grocery store? Us neither. 
Propylene glycol is used in antifreeze and personal sexual lubricants. Everything's got to be clean, crisp, and tasty. It also works as a moisture preserver and an anti-caking agent. It's been deemed safe for consumption, but that doesn't necessarily make it appetizing. I mean, it's fresh when you get it, and it's fresh when I pop it in my mouth. It's like having somebody come in your own kitchen and make you a salad. Oh, and it's used in more than just the salads, including Big Mac sauce. Number six, the beef with Taco Bell. Yo quiero Taco Bell. McDonald's is constantly having to reassert that its burgers are made from 100% real beef with, quote, no fillers, additives, or preservatives. Taco Bell, on the other hand, would probably rather not talk about it. Ground beef made from 88% beef just doesn't have the same ring to it. 12% is an abysmal grade on a test, but when it represents the other mysterious ingredients in your taco beef, it feels very high. Well, can it get any worse? You don't ask. Just eat. You just smile. Smile. Taco Bell was hit with a class action lawsuit back in 2011, prompting the fast food chain to describe the 12% as, quote, seasonings, spices, water, and other ingredients that provide taste, texture, and moisture. The lawsuit accuses Taco Bell of misleading advertising. Sorry, my mouth is full. The lawsuit says internally, Taco Bell doesn't call this beef, it calls it taco meat filling. The defense starts strong, but it's the other ingredients like sodium phosphates and potassium chloride that are less persuasive. I'm pretty sure you, you know what you're paying for when you come to Taco Bell. If you want real beef, you probably go somewhere else. Number five, oil, salt, and dimethyl polysiloxane. Well, that's certainly a mouthful. We're surprised it's not in the Taco Bell ground beef. An anti-foaming agent, Dimethyl polysiloxane, or PDSM, is used in fast food joints around the world. If there's a deep fryer, chances are that PDSM is on the ingredients list. Its purpose is to stop the vats of hot oil from foaming up when the food goes in. We can appreciate the value of such an additive, especially from a safety perspective. So bring your appetite, bring everybody, for our 20-piece chicken McNuggets, $2.99 every day. Anyone who's deep fried at home knows all too well the stress of the pot bubbling over. The thing is that dimethyl polysiloxane is a type of silicone that is used in various cosmetics and silly putty, none of which we want to put in our mouths. What stretches and stretches? Silly putty. What picks up pictures from a newspaper and makes them silly? And if you stretch it, even sillier. Silly putty. Number four, Taco Bell was founded on an allegedly stolen recipe. This is obviously a pretty damning accusation, so we'd like to preface this entry by saying that we're just stating what's been reported by other outlets, such as the New York Times. We're putting our reputation at stake. Everything's a beginning to sizzle. According to Eater Los Angeles, there would perhaps be no Taco Bell had it not been for Mitla Cafe in San Bernardino. Should we tell them about these? Absolutely not. This local favorite, owned and operated by Lucia and Salvador Rodriguez, sold 10-cent hard-shell tacos dorados that people couldn't get enough of. Taco Bell founder Glenn Bell, then in the business of hot dogs and hamburgers, apparently befriended the couple and earned their trust to the point that he was allowed into the kitchen. So in 1962, Glenn, who's a genius, opened a restaurant serving tacos for just 19 cents, and he called it Taco Bell. Armed with the Rodriguez recipe, he launched his taco empire, giving no credit to Mitla Cafe. Number three, bread, flatbread, wrap, or yoga mat. Sounds like a great sandwich. Sandwich? That was just the bread. Great bread makes a delicious sandwich. Subway is an empire built on the promise of providing healthy choices. But few people want those choices to include consuming a chemical also found in yoga mats and other foamed plastics. Subway's use of the chemical azodicarbonamide in bread came under fire in 2014 in response to an online petition from food babe blogger Vani Hari. Hari has been widely criticized for peddling pseudoscience on her blog, but there is debate about the compound, which has been banned as a food additive in Australia and the EU. What is this chemical we're talking about? Kate, the chemical is called azodicarbonamide, and it's used to make the bread stronger, to strengthen the bread. And Subway says, hey, it's safe. And they point out that the Food and Drug Administration says that it's safe. But Subway says that they are removing it as part of their bread improvement process. Under pressure, Subway removed it from their ingredients. But you probably still eat it because it's used in many breads, pastries, pizzas, and other doughy foods. After all, if the bread tastes better, the sandwich will too. Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Number two, the real story behind the hot coffee lawsuit. Stella Liebeck spilled just eight ounces of coffee. 
but she attracted a flood of attention. The history of fast food and consumer protection is rife with wild and crazy legal battles. But there's perhaps no case more infamous than this one. As many people have said, you shouldn't have to warn customers that coffee is hot. What's next, labeling water as wet? The thing is, people rarely get into specifics of the incident. When 79-year-old Stella Liebeck spilled McDonald's coffee on herself in 1992, her injuries were horrific. They resulted in third-degree burns, eight days of hospitalization, skin grafts, and two years of follow-up medical treatments. Stella tried to get McDonald's to settle. She even agreed to mediation, but McDonald's wouldn't budge. They gave her no choice but to go to court. The issue wasn't that the coffee hadn't been labeled as hot, but rather that it was served to her at somewhere between 180 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 30 degrees hotter than the coffee you brew at home. The details were so alarming, the jury awarded Liebeck $160,000 in compensation and they added $2.7 million to punish McDonald's. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. There's a lot more in that cheese than dairy. The cheese at most fast food restaurants is heavily processed. The tempting taste of McDonald's alluring quarter pounder with cheese. Add fries and a Coke for an irresistible deal. Burgers that won't rot. This has been chalked up to a lack of moisture, but it's still unnerving. The so hypothesis is, is that the burgers are so full of preservatives that they stop the growth of microbes. But the reality is, it's just dried out. Microbes don't grow on it for the simple reason it lacks moisture. Your fries might not rot either. McDonald's french fries in particular show little change over time. Two weeks, french fries from a regular restaurant. Two weeks, french fries from a McDonald's restaurant. Ammonium sulfate. It's commonly used in fertilizer and some fast food hamburger buns and breads. <laughs> Yummy sand. Silicon dioxide, a component of sand, is used as a fast food anti-caking agent. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Arby's Meat Mishaps this fast food chain has got a great selection of items on their menu. It's time to pick your two for six faves you crave. The smokehouse brisket? Divine. And don't even get us started on their mouth-watering roast beef sandwiches. From chicken and beef to their sliders, loaded fries, and other tasty sides, Arby's knows what their customers want. But they should really leave the human meat to Dr. Lecter. Back in 2012, Michigan native Ryan Hart was more than halfway through his junior roast beef sandwich when he found a part of an employee's finger with his teeth. She was treated at a hospital. The boy had a blood test and got some medication. Arby's is calling it an isolated incident. Sadly, this wasn't the company's first offense. In 2004, an Ohio man found a nearly inch-long piece of skin in his sandwich. Apparently, there had been an incident while shredding lettuce. Barf. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.